A blessed day, a blessed evening to all of you. Those who are joining us through this uh, live stream celebration of the Mass here at the Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word. As I used to do in, during these weekdays that I uh, focus the reflection on the first reading. Today, uh, we continue to uh, meditate on the readings readings that are taken from the so-called uh, post-exile writings, meaning around uh, the 5th or 6th century before Christ, after the exile of the, the people of God from Babylon, there were several writings, and one of them we have heard today, that of the prophet Haggai. And one of the chief concerns of these writings, several writings, the so-called post-exile writings, is the reconstruction of the Temple of Jerusalem. Which, when they returned from Babylon, it was in ruin. And that was the concern of... Uh, of uh, these writers now one of the concerns main concerns because there there was this idea that uh, the temple that god must have a temple now and uh, in today's reading the hebrew people started to reconstruct the temple of Jerusalem after their Babylonian exile. It is precisely to this enterprise which continues very slowly that Haggai, the prophet we have heard today, dedicates his preaching, his first preaching in fact, about the reconstruction of uh, this Jerusalem temple. The prophet Haggai in a, a fairly simple words, plain words, lashes out against the lack of passion or inertia of the leaders of the community in this rebuilding. No? It passed already according to the first reading. Two years after their arrival and they were moving so slowly. No? So the prophet Haggai preached against them their stinginess of these returnees. They were not very generous and they were not very committed in the reconstruction of the temple, which, according to historians, would be completed only after five years. That's why we hear the, uh, the preaching of uh, Haggai today a bit uh, harsh in his... Uh, in his words against this lack of commitment of the people in the reconstruction of uh, the temple. The appeal of the prophet Haggai, therefore, is transformed into a kind of a critique to their egoism and exaggerated individualism against excessive privatization and the narrowing of their social horizons, which is also our experience in the contemporary society. The words of the prophet interrogate us, believers, of the quality of our sense of community and of our fraternal 
relationships. What can we learn from this? On the concern of the prophet for the reconstruction of the temple. Does God really need a temple? As a young religious priest preparing uh, for the missions, I remember that uh, uh, we were uh, reminded very often by our formators in that missionary work is not primarily about building constructions but they insisted on the formation of a vibrant Christian communities the thinking is that even if you have beautiful buildings churches but if you have a lousy community if you do not have committed Christians what's that for so the uh, emphasis uh, they had uh, brained was us now going to mission it is not your task they said no to be builders of physical temples or churches primarily our mission is to form communities vibrant communities but uh, my experience too in working in the missions particularly in Argentina that uh, although this is not the construction is not the main concern but as the com I observed that as a community Christian community grows and matures and as the people see their material needs for example of the community for uh, a church a chapel and this community start to form and build their own and I observe that when a community that is formed well it's easier to launch projects such as construction physical construction for for their needs in fact I saw that such projects strengthen the members of the community in their relationship with its other and uh, becomes their projects becomes a manifestation of their maturity as a Christian community that's why on the one hand yes it is true that uh, the uh, the emphasis is on the community but also on the other hand there as the community matures they would produce they would have would see their need for such beautiful temples churches as a testimony also of their unity and of their mature faith does God really need a temple a house in our midst strictly speaking God being a spirit I think doesn't need a temple the whole creation is his is his but we limited creatures are the ones in need I think of particular places particular times as markers and reminders of our need to encounter God so temples church buildings chapels days special locations like Sundays Christmas etc are signposts to remind us of our vocation and need to be in communion with God and with one another in the final analysis 
God's insistence of the rebuilding of the, Jerus the temple in Jerusalem through the prophets he is for the people and not for him primarily God wishes to remind us of our calling to be in communion with him and with our fellow followers the temple the church is a symbol of our vocation to communion may we grow in our awareness and our commitment to uh, towards communion towards unity as followers of God and when there is as I've said vibrant Christian community it is easier to pursue projects like building monuments that would help us or temples that would help us grow in our communion with its other and with God may the Lord who has called us as his children grow in our desire towards communion towards communion with him and towards our communion with each other and that is what the temple the church stands for that we are called to communion to unity as children of God.